Hi everyone, welcome to Spill the Tea Radio, where we interview awesome singers, songwriters, and those who influence their lives. Spill the Tea Radio explores the journey, creativity, and inspiration behind the songs. My next guest is a singer-songwriter with a lifelong passion for music and has been proudly performing in the GTA for years. She has a love for piano, which began at the age of 12. By 15, she was writing and performing in local coffee houses. Her father was a part-time drummer and singer whose repertoire included all of the big band favorites and crooners of the 40s. This influence is notable in her musical styling and writing. Her talent for creating music and lyrics will both stir and soothe your soul. So, let's spill the tea with Karen Thornton. Welcome, Karen. Hi. Thanks, David. Well, it's great to have you back again. Karen was on our show, uh, one of our shows in April with a song worth the wait, a song from an album that was five years in the making. Fortunately for us, this new song came a little bit faster, and uh, we're going to feature it a little (laughs) bit uh, later in the show. But first of all, Karen, what have you been up to since we chatted with you in April? Well, I released this song just on uh, last Friday, June 14th, I think it was. Um, And I'm working on another song that's been recorded and we start mixing soon. Um, Some live performances. I did um, another uh, uh, jazz original show at the West Hill Theatre in Hamilton, which is a beautifully restored old historic theatre in Hamilton. And they've put a lot into it and uh, it's just gorgeous. So it's a great about 350 seater and um, did a show there and I'll do another one coming up in the fall. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so just looking forward to playing outside in the summer. And I, I just love playing outside at festivals and uh, just love the whole vibe, you know, so um, and I've started to work on another song as well. So uh, just still feeling really creative, which is what I really enjoy, just being part of a creative process. Now, you're um, the one album that we featured or the song that we featured from the album in April. That was five years in the making. How are the creative juices flowing these days? Certainly we're not going. Now you had some other things going on in your life, which took the five years uh, to produce that album. But how are the creative juices flowing these days? Where are the ideas coming from? From all over the place, really. And even though that album um, took so long, it wasn't really intentional, to be honest with you. It's just that the producer who did it uh, to me, who was so good that I thought he was also worth the wait to work with him, um, was really, really busy uh, doing a lot of scoring and editing for film and television shows. And so I just thought, you know what, I have no time limit on this. I'm just going to wait until we can put more time into it. And so to me, that that was great. It wasn't like my career was depending on it. So um, so that was a really wonderful thing to do. But now I'm getting my ideas from all over the place. And hey, do you remember that movie from the 80s with Dudley Moore? It was called um, Arthur. Do you remember that? Um, Karen, I'm way too young to remember. The, of course, I of course I remember Arthur. Yes. <laughs> well, I thought he was just a fantastic, you know, so funny. And I remember there was a line from that movie when you know sometimes he would just break out into spontaneous laughter. Of course, he was he was a drunk too. Yes. But sometimes he, would, but a really sweet drunk, right? Like everybody loved. Him. Everybody loved Dudley Moore <laughs> yeah. as a drunk. Oh, he was so funny, but. So every now and then he would break out into spontaneous laughter and someone said, Jim, what are you laughing about, Arthur? And he said, I don't know. Sometimes I just think funny things. And then he laughed again. And so for me, every now and then, I'm not a drunk, but every now and then um, I'll get an idea or just a funny thought or a funny spin on something. And I'll just kind of mentally note that uh, and just say, you know what, that I, I need to write about that someday. So that's kind of, um, spontaneous ideas. Sometimes I just think funny things or I see funny things and I think, yeah, I got to write about that because uh, I've written some serious songs, obviously, but there's always been a part of me that just has always loved musical theater and musical comedy. So I grew up seeing a lot of it. And so for me, um, I just love listening to some of those really cleverly written 
funny songs that are so often part of, uh, you know, in Broadway shows. So, Karen, you mentioned that uh, you waited for the producer to uh, produce your last album. Yeah. For for younger singer songwriters, or I shouldn't say younger, for those that are starting out in their career yeah. and are are looking to maybe cut that first that first song to go into a studio and cut that first song. You've had some uh, uh, experience with uh, with going into the studio and yeah. selecting that producer. How do you know what producer to select? Like, what are the what are the qualities? What's the connection that you look for? Because the producer of a, of a song can make or break that song. So true. But I mean, you know, we we actually went to high school together. So we had a long standing friendship. So for me, and, and I was also aware of what he did, the body of his work, and I knew how good his production was and what he would bring to it. But for someone new, I mean, there's just so much out there available now. Um, I mean, my gut feeling would say, um, do your research and, you know, get some reviews. If you, uh, if there's some sort of personal connection or you know someone else that has that the producer has worked with then that's always good I just think that's really that's always important and you know what they're capable of and and what they can do for you um because it's a really interesting relationship because you still want to be true to who you are and yet you want to be open to someone's suggestions um but I think there's just so much more information out now there, David, that most people, well, we, as consumers, we do it all the time, right? Mm -hmm. When we're going to buy something now, we look for the reviews, um, like the real reviews, not the phony reviews. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and I think that that's what I would advise young people to do. And so often it's not in a big studio. Most people now are like, you know, recording in their homes. So, but I think you really want to be able to hear the quality of the production. And I want to make sure, I, I suggest that you want to make sure that they can relate to what you do musically as well in terms of genre, because that's huge. That'll affect the whole uh, miking technique. Um, and knowing that they can bring something positive to your project, that's important. So uh, if, if you want to, if you're a country artist, um, I, I'd recommend sticking with someone who, who has worked with other country artists so they're familiar with the genre. Um, they, they know the, the more uh, contemporary techniques and they know, um, uh, just really bring out the best in your experience. So you wouldn't want to pair up with someone who doesn't really understand your genre. <laughs> but let's get into one of the songs that Karen wrote. Um, the uh, this song, you know, worth the wait, uh, was from uh, August 2021. It was f it was five years in the making. Fortunately, we didn't have to wait five years for this one. So let's take a listen to singer songwriter Karen Thornton and her song. Come on, let's dance. I like to cha cha or do the rumba all night long. Cause I love to dance when I get the chance To my favorite songs Well I see you standing there Looking oh so sweet Bet you could dance me off my feet What do you say? Come on, let's dance I know I'm charming It is alarming you would think I could dance I try to be cool But I look like a fool I don't stand a chance You may think I'm sweet I got two left feet Sad, but it's true Thanks But I really can't dance Come on and dance Understand 
two cha cha cha. One two cha cha cha. One two cha. I'm dancing. One two cha cha cha. Excuse me. Sorry. That's like one two cha 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 cha. One two cha cha. Cha cha cha. Sorry about that. Cha cha. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Let's Dance by Karen Cha-cha. Thornton. Karen, this song has a little bit more of a, or has a comedic overtone to it. Tell us about the song and why you decided to uh, to write this song that's a little tongue-in-cheek. I don't know what you're talking about. It's a very serious song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I wrote this song maybe five, six years ago, and I like writing funny songs, like I said. So first one I did was Please Don't Sing, kind of about my husband. Um, and then I've, uh, this one is kind of like, uh, oh my goodness, you really can't dance. So I thought about this and I'm not gonna say throw anybody in the bus. And it, this song is not about my husband, but I do remember seeing someone dance one time and I thought, oh my goodness, God bless them. Like they really can't dance. They have no sense of rhythm. It looks like a walking disaster. And um and just waiting for a, a train wreck. And the woman who was dancing with him was quite a good dancer. And um, <clears throat> she was very sweet and she wasn't looking into his eyes. But uh, so I thought, as I said earlier, I sometimes I, I think funny things. <laughs> I thought, I'm going to write a song about that someday. So I did. And then um, I decided to, I thought it would be great as a duet. So my uh, cohort, uh, my um partner in crime, who is one of the funniest people I know, Rob Dixon, who's very talented in his own right. He writes songs as well. He um, he has a mariachi band that he's had for a, a number of years. Um, and uh, mariachi, mariachi Fuego, great trumpet player. Um, I said, would you please sing the song with me? Because, you know, it's screaming for you, Rob. Like, it's a comedy. So we recorded this at his place. He played the trumpet. And there's a marimba on the track. And he made this. He actually constructed his own marimba. This was like a, a COVID project for him. And it's beautiful. And he's playing it. So anyways, I just thought, I just wanted it to be a duet. And I just hope that people would laugh when they heard it and make them feel good. Because um, I don't know, David, I, David I, I just like to laugh. And I, I think that every now and then I just throw in a, you know, a comedy song because why not? Well, we need more things to laugh about. And one of the true pleasures in life, they say, is dance like nobody's watching. So uh, whoever that person was, I'm sure they were were enjoying themselves. And that's the way I dance because uh, he just knows I'm not coordinated in that area. 
Karen, how do people find out more about you, uh, where you're going to be performing, more about your music? What's the website streaming services? Where can they go? Yeah, so all my socials are on my website. And people can even just contact me through email on my website. Uh, it's, so it's Karen Thornton, T-H-O-R-N-T-O-N music.com. Um, a lot of people just just contact me right through there, especially when they're hiring me for events or anything. But uh, you'll see on Spotify, Apple Music, um, Instagram, um yeah they can contact me we have been in conversation with karen thornton karen thanks for being with us 